So I want to take you on a little bit of a journey, if you'll go with me on this. Uh, our theme is Rise Up uh, for this year's conference. And so uh, over, you know, the last while, just kind of getting prepared and thinking about this, I just went on a little bit of a journey. And I want to take you with me on it, uh, just to kind of get us... I feel like we're already loosened up, but maybe just to get me loosened up on the stage here. Um, I, I came across this article about the uses of the word up. Have you, has anybody ever seen that? I took, it's kind of a lighthearted thing, but it's, it kind of explores all the ways that we use this two-letter word up. And it was fascinating to me, and I just thought that I'd share a few of them. We wake up. At a meeting, topics come up, people speak up, we call up our friends, we take up with the wrong crowd, you can brighten up a room, we polish the silverware, polish up the silverware, you warm up the leftovers, and then you clean up the kitchen, we lock up the house, people fix up the old car, her sister always stirs up trouble, we line up, is that somebody's sister out there? We line up for tickets. She works up an appetite. You think up excuses. To be dressed up is special. A drain must be opened up because it is stopped up. Whatever you do is up to you. And so we're talking about rise up. So obviously I had to look up common phrases that have rise in it. So I thought I'd share those with you too. Rise through the ranks, get a rise out of somebody. Give rise to something on the rise, rise up in the world, rise above, rise against, rise and shine, rise from the ashes, rise from the dead, rise to the challenge, rise to the occasion, rise to the top, and of course, rise up. So if we're going on this journey about what this has been, you know, kind of becoming to mean to me, and obviously I had to go to the Bible because you can't, like, do a women's conference at a church and not consider what the Bible has to say, right? And so I looked up Rise Up in the Bible, and I was kind of, I was kind of astonished because Rise Up or Arise or Rise or even Stand Up, the, the word that's used for that in the Bible, it's used over 700 times in the course of the Bible. So I think that that's a pretty, pretty important concept to God. I could only find that love was mentioned like 400 times in the Bible. I'm looking at Pastor Nicole because she, she would know. <laughs> Is that right? About right? Maybe. Oops. Give or take. Depends on what kind of love you're talking about. So I picked out three. I didn't, I'm not going to share all 700. You're welcome. I picked out three. Ephesians 5, get up sleeper and rise up from the dead and Christ will shine on you. Psalm 139, oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. How many of you want to be known? Known by the creator of the universe. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. Isaiah 60, rise up and shine, for your light has come. The shining greatness of the Lord has risen upon you. So I just have... As I was researching and, and going on this journey, it just really felt this encouragement to share with you that it's your time to rise up and become all that God is calling you to become. And if you go to church a lot, you, you might hear that a lot. And I don't want to gloss over it just because it's common or familiar. Because there's a difference between hearing something and applying it to our lives. And I want you to know before you lay your head on the pillow tonight, that it is your time to rise and become everything that God is calling you to become. Look at the girl next to you and say, it's my time. It's my time. Look at the other girl, your second choice, and say, it's my time. So all these things on this journey of mine that I'm bringing you along with. Thank you for graciously walking along with it with me. It, it brought me to these four things that I just want to share some observations of. So my message title, if you want to write it down, is balloons, kites, high rises, toddlers. 
That's a circle, people. I'm going to be talking in circles. You're welcome. But you're all women, so you understand. It's fine. So number one, if you want to rise, what you put in matters. This is the balloons. If you want to rise, what you put in matters. I have a lovely assistant over here helping me. Thank you. Give it up for Kiri. She's dancing. She came up to Bellevue and watched my toddler today from Graham Puyallup. I love you. Thank you. So what you put in matters. And if we look at this balloon, she blew this up with her air, right? That was inside of her. And if we think about it like this, that in our own lives, when we are trying to work out our life, in our own humanity. And so we blow up our own accomplishments. We blow up our own family. We blow up our school experience, our relationships, our friendships. We blow it all up. And it's only, I mean, it can stay up in the air, right? But I have to keep it up. I, in my own strength, I have to keep it up in the air, and if I, if I miss it, it falls down. If I get tired in my own strength of, you know, being a good mom or being a good daughter or being a good boss or being a good employee, I have to, if I'm gonna keep this up, because I blew it up with my own air, blew it up in my own strength, I can do it. It's gonna stay up in the air for as long as I don't get tired. But I'm a human. I don't have infinite powers. And there's something about when we realize that in our own humanity, I get angry. I get frustrated. I get depressed. In our humanity, we get lost. We get tired. Yes, we can keep this balloon up for as long as we're willing to hit it in the air. But there's another source that we can put inside of a balloon. And I want us just to consider helium for the point of illustration. That this helium is like the spirit of God. And if we want to rise... What we put in matters. Because if we're blowing up our life with our own strength, it will stay afloat as long as we're willing to keep it afloat on our own strength. But we're going to reach a point of exhaustion, of burnout, tired, depression, anxiety, if it's in our own strength. But there's something that happens when we fill up our life with the Spirit of God a new strength. We allow the supernatural to happen. We allow God's super to intersect with our natural. And things change. Things are different. God's Holy Spirit in me. And I can overcome the world. I think you're having some trouble with it. I think we have one in the back. You wanna go get that one in the back that's already blown up? We had a backup plan. Because the Spirit of God can happen anywhere, at any time, in plan A, plan B, plan C. I think it's actually tied onto the banister. But let me just show you this illustration. Thank you so much. So if I put the Spirit of God into my life and I allow His breath to fuel my family, to fuel my accomplishments, to fuel my school experience, to fuel my friendships, my relationships. Look at that. They're just staying up all by themselves. All I gotta do is hold on to them. All I gotta do is keep them close.
There's a new strength that comes when we put the right source into our life. And the interesting thing for all the skeptics out there, I'm a skeptic, so that's why I can talk about it, is that yes, this helium and these balloons, these balloons will droop at some point. But there's a beauty in that. Let's see if that'll hold them all down. If they start flying away, we'll just get a BB gun leader. I have boys, I own them. When we allow the Spirit of God to enter into our life, it's not a one and done hit. We do have to go back to the source. We do need to have regular encounters with God. We do need to make our Bible and worship music and positive messages. We do need to make church a priority. We do need to make small groups and serving on a team a priority. Why? Because that means we're constantly putting in the Spirit of God into our life. And we're not having to juggle all of the balloons and keeping them up in the air on our own strength. We can rely on the supernatural strength of our Creator. One arise. We rise when we encounter God on a regular basis. Romans 8, verse 11, it says this. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. When you say yes to Jesus, the same power that conquered the grave lives inside of you. And it's not just a pretty song and some lyrics. It's real power. You say yes to Jesus, you can live with joy when life is hard. You can have a peace about your life. Even when you're facing hardships, because it's not in your strength that's keeping these up. It's in the strength of God. I'm gonna give these to you because I think they're gonna fly around. If we, uh... I get distracted easily. I like, kept thinking they were gonna come at me, corner of my eye. The next thing, high rises. If you wanna rise, your foundation is important. So it matters what you put in yourself, in your life. It matters what your foundation is like. And the truth of the matter is the higher you rise, the more important your foundation becomes. In fact, it's the key to withstanding all life is going to throw at you. In Dubai, the highest building in the world. Oh, I need to tell you this part. That's why I have slides. It kind of keeps me on track. Do you wish to rise? Begin by descending. And what I mean is that this tower right here in Dubai doesn't even have the whole thing in the picture because it's so tall. It's over 2,700 feet tall. World champion, it's the highest building in the world. They had to go down 164 feet into the earth for the foundation. That would be if you dug a hole for the great wheel in Seattle and put it in the hole, you would only see about 10 feet of it. The great wheel is about 175 feet. They dug a hole 164 feet deep for the tallest building in the world. Most houses are two to six feet of foundation. 164 feet down into the earth. The higher you rise, the more important your foundation becomes. In Matthew chapter 7, it says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had, it had its foundation on the rock. We rise when we build our life on a strong foundation. 
I get, I think I get most anxious or, or most depressed when I'm trying to achieve things, not only in my own strength, like the balloons, but also when I feel like my foundation is under attack. You know, sometimes your foundation might be under attack because your faith hasn't quite solidified in your life. And so you could feel like your foundation is under attack when something bad happens or somebody disappoints you or a bad report comes in from the doctor. And so your faith wavers. Your foundation is being under attack. Being able to recognize that and fortifying it, that's how you can rise. Paying attention to the foundation, building up your faith. For me, I feel like my faith is pretty solid in who I am at the core of my being. And so when my faith gets attacked, my foundation, it's more because I'm allowing familiarity to fog up my fundamentals of my faith. I'm allowing the majority of my time to not be Bible, to not be positive messages in podcasts, you know, I'm finding myself the most anxious and the most depressed when I take a self check and I'm like, man, what have I been putting inside of me? What have I been building my life on? Not out of I'm rebelling against my faith, just out of, I don't know, being lazy with my faith. Can I just get real with you tonight? Our foundation comes under attack sometimes because our faith hasn't solidified yet, but sometimes our faith is solid. It's our fundamentals that are getting under attack. And I want to tell you tonight that if we want to go high, if we want to rise up to all that God has called us to be, we need to take an account. We need to get back to the fundamentals of our faith and not become so familiar that it breeds contempt with them, but get back into our Bible. Get back into those worship songs. Get back into church. Listen to those podcasts. We are living in a world of technology today. We have more access today than we've ever had to get the Word of God into our lives. So instead of us binging on the next TV show, let's binge on some weekend messages, some conference messages, and let's feed our faith. I've totally binged on TV shows before. You are not alone. But I think if we want to go to that next level, we can't allow busyness, we can't allow status quo, we can't allow the next, you know, the latest thing on Hulu or Netflix to grab our attention so much that it supersedes the fundamentals of our faith. So we're talking about balloons, we're talking about high rises, we're also talking about kites. If you want to rise, you can't without the wind. Now I've flown a kite a few times in my life and I've always just assumed that the kite was flying with the wind. Yes? Have you thought that? You're all smarter than I am? Okay. Well, Winston Churchill said kites rise highest against the wind, not with it. And it got me thinking about this, that we can either be worried in the wind or we can use the wind to our advantage. What I mean, the wind in this scenario is the pressure of life that you face, the hardships that we come in contact with. And when we're faced with that pressure, when the wind is that headwind against our person where it just feels like we are not meant to go on because the pressure is so thick. I want us to consider the kite and that the kite goes highest against the wind. It leverages the wind factor so that it can get higher in the sky. What I want to tell you tonight is that we can find pity in the pressure. We can find pity in the pain or we can find purpose. We can find pity, or we can find purpose. 
Each one of us are gonna go through hard times. Each one of us are gonna find, have pressure. Each one of us are gonna have challenges. Each one of us are gonna have pain. My pain might not be your pain. Your pain not, might not be my pain. My challenge might seem small to you, but it's big to me and vice versa. And we can find pity in the pain or we can find purpose in the pain. I wanna encourage you, ladies, that as you feel the pressure of life, as you feel the wind in your face, to keep moving, to keep breathing, whatever you have to do to keep moving forward. When I was in college, one of our um, off-season trainings was this, this is a Google Earth picture, so it doesn't do it justice, but for illustration's sake, we had to run up Taylor Avenue in Bellingham, Washington. And, woo, go Vikings. Um, we had to run up this, this huge hill. I mean, it would be like, I don't even, I was trying to come up with the, the comparable, maybe from First Avenue, downtown Seattle, all the way up to like Sixth or Seventh Avenue, all the hills, and you don't have the stoplights to give you a break at the crosswalks because you're just on a residential street and it's like the stop sign's there, but the coach told you if you stop, everybody has to go over, like start over at the beginning. If anybody stops on our 14 person squad, anybody, like slowest girl, fastest girl, tired girl, in shape girl, whatever, if anybody stopped, the whole team was starting over. And so we were, you know, we, we were just, just keep moving. <laughs> Just, it doesn't matter, they told us, it doesn't matter how fast you go, just keep your feet moving. And if anybody stops, <sighs> you're all starting over. And so we were motivated to keep moving those feet. Last summer, Ryan and I, we went up with a, a couple of people and we uh, climbed. Uh, hi, it's a hike. But I like to use the word climb because it feels better. <laughs> We hiked um, from Paradise up to Camp Muir on Mount Rainier, which is 10,000 feet. It's the highest I've ever been on a mountain. But things start happening the higher you get in altitude. Some of you might know more about this than I do, but for me, I realized that my breathing changed. I realized that all my old basketball injuries started aching again. And it was just, just keep going. Just keep Move in your feet because there's something that happens. The hardest climb usually renders the best view. And so it's worth it to keep moving. Isaiah encourages us. But those who wait for the Lord, and not just like sit back in the lazy chair waiting, those who expect, look for, and hope in, will gain new strength, renew their power. They will lift up their wings and rise up close to God like eagles or like kites, rising toward the sun. They will run and not become weary. They will walk and not grow tired. If we wanna rise, we have to know we can't rise without the wind. Yes, acknowledge the wind. Acknowledge the pressure. Call it for what it is. But when we're saying that life is hard, let's not forget that God is good. And let's find purpose in the pain. <laughs> Balloons, high rises, kites and toddlers. <laughs> Stay with me on this one. If you want to rise, accept that falling is inevitable and rising back up is a choice. Maybe you feel like you've fallen too many times. Maybe you feel like you've failed too many times. You've disappointed too many people. How could God use you? How could you have a purpose? Because of what your past looks like. And I found in the Bible that the righteous falls seven times and rises again. And to me, that's not just a number seven. Like, well, I've made more mistakes than seven mistakes, so I guess that means I'm out. 
Every time you fall down, it's your choice to rise up again. And for me, thinking about it through the eyes of a parent with a toddler, my eight-year-old, when he was learning to walk, and our two-year-old, when he was learning to walk, there's something that happens when the kids are taking their first step. And if you've experienced it, it's a, it's a process. You know, they go from, like, nothing to, like, lifting their head up. You know, when they're six or eight months old, and then they're rolling over, and then they're trying to crawl, and then all of a sudden they're ready, they think they're ready to take their first step. And so, you know, they're usually like standing on by something and like holding on and then letting go. And they don't necessarily know what's going on, but they just know that they see everybody else walking on two feet. So they think they have to do it, right? And so they're just like getting their balance and then they take a step and then they usually fall down, right? And what do parents do? Good job! Good job! You took a step! We don't shame them for falling. You fell, don't ever do that again. I can't believe you can't walk. I can't believe you fell. You'll never walk, you faller. <laughs> what do we do as parents? We position them to take another step. We put them seated on a stair so they can launch into a step. We put them next to the couch or the chair or the ottoman and we stand them up and we put their little hand on it and then we say, okay, take another step. You can do it. You got this. And then, you know, they kind of look at you and they're wobbling and and then they take out and then they fall. What do we do? Good job! You did it! Way to go! Those kids fall so many times when they learn how to walk. We all still fall when we're walking sometimes. I've been walking for over 30 years and I still trip over my feet sometimes. <laughs> Parents don't shame their kids when they're learning how to walk. They position them to take that next step, to try again. There's a, a great quote by Charles Spurgeon. He said, fear to fear. Be afraid to be afraid. Your worst enemy is within your own bosom, your own person. Get to your knees and cry out for help. And then rise up saying, I will trust and not be afraid. Don't give up. Rise up. The Bible says if... If an earthly father or mother does good to their children, how much more does the heavenly father? When we fall down, God isn't up in heaven shaming you. I can't believe you fell. I can't believe you messed up. No, what does he do? I think he's up in heaven just like any parent would be with their kid learning how to walk. Man, good job for trying. Get back up. Come on, let's go try something else. Come over here and, and get positioned with this church or get positioned with these friends or get positioned with this job. Let's see you succeed. Come on, girl, you got this. You can do it. Way to go for trying. Good job. A royal mess up? God's grace is big enough for that. And we don't mess up just to experience God's grace because God's grace is bigger than just for forgiveness. But for any mess up, big or small, 
God's grace is big enough for that. And I believe that he says shame off of you. Just like we would to our toddlers learning how to walk. We encourage them, we press them forward. We want them to win. And maybe, maybe you're here, you just need to adjust your paradigm about who God is and what he is in your life. That he is a good father. That he does want you to be positioned for greatness. That he has created you for influence. And so he wants you to succeed. There's a last observation that I want to share with you. And it's about seeds. Two seeds lay side by side in the fertile soil. The first seed said, I want to grow. I want to send my roots deep into the soil beneath me and thrust my sprouts through the earth's crust above me. I want to unfurl my tender buds like banners to announce the arrival of spring. I want to let the, feel the warmth of the sun on my face and the blessing of the morning dew on my petals. And so she grew. On the other hand, the second seed said, hmm, if I send my roots into the ground below, I don't know what I'm going to encounter in the dark. If I push my way through that hard soil above me, I may damage my delicate sprouts. What if I let my buds open and a snail tries to eat them? And if I were to open my blossoms, a small child may pull me from the ground. No, it's much better for me to wait until it's safe. And so she waited. And then one day, a yard hen scratching around in the early spring ground for food found the waiting seed and promptly ate it up. That's an actual kid's book. <laughs> Don't be afraid to rise up and become everything God has called you to become. We're not, we're not created to stay hidden and safe. Yes, it's going to be hard. Yes, there is uncertainties. Yes, there is unknowns. Yes, th there are difficulties in the pathway to purpose. But don't stay hidden. The Bible talks about there is living through dying. In John 12, verily, very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces more seeds. In Galatians, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. When we allow God to come into our life and we say yes to Jesus, it's like we're that seed that says, I want to grow. And a seed, in order to grow, must die to its current self. And it can no longer be, be a seed in the ground if it wants to become the flower or the tree or the bush that it is meant to become. And yes, you have to put down the roots in, the, in a dark place or a place that you have unknowns. You have to get through the hard crust of the surface and, and see what is out there behind, beyond the difficulties. Yes, there are uncertainties once you open up and become vulnerable to friends or people or your small group. There are uncertainties. There are hardships. There are doubts. But let me just say this to you. It's your time to rise up and become all that God is calling you to become. It's your time to not stay hidden. It's your time to reach out. It's your time to become vulnerable. It's your time to allow God to do what he is calling you to do inside of you and then through you into your workplace, into your school, into your families, into our communities. Where you're at is on purpose. 
God has a purpose for you, lady. God has a purpose for you, girl. So let's stop hiding from it. Let's do something about it. We're going to close out this session. I just want to ask everybody to rise up to your feet. And let's pray together. And I don't want to do all the praying. I want you to pray for one another. And so grab a girl next to you. And let's pray for each other. The team's going to sing and worship. And let's pray for each other. You might not know exactly what to say. You might not know their whole situation, but you can speak encouragement. You can speak life. You can speak God's plan over their life. You can speak peace. You can speak clarity. You can speak confidence and boldness. Let's pray for each other in these next few minutes. In Jesus' name.